Hello everyone and welcome to the Scafidi Travels YouTube channel. Today I'd like to talk you through one of the topics I get asked about most whenever I tell people what I do for a living, which is how did I become a travel writer? This video is structured around four main questions. So the first question is when and why did I first start travel writing? Second question is how did I get my first travel writing gig? The third question is what kind of stuff do I write now? And the fourth and final question is, how did I get a job writing for Brat Travel Guides? I've put a link to each of the questions in the video description below. So if you're particularly interested in one of those four, you wanna skip ahead, just click on the link and it'll take you straight to that question. Also, I'm running a Reddit AMA, so an Ask Me Anything, this Sunday, the 19th of January. So if there are any other questions that you don't think I've covered, if I miss something out, uh, please just join us on the Reddit AMA and ask whatever question you want, I'll try and get it answered or you could just put a comment in the comment section below. Either way, after Sunday, when all the questions have been asked, I will post a link in the description here so that everyone has access to that and it can act as like a frequently asked questions section for this video. So question one, when and why did I first start travel writing? I've been interested in languages since I was at school. I grew up in a bilingual household and I really enjoyed learning and speaking other languages as a child. It wasn't really until university when I actually, or after university, when I considered travel writing as a viable job to do when I was older. After I graduated, I moved to Khartoum, Sudan, and that is a topic for a whole other video. I'll talk you all through that, but maybe later on. Soon after arriving, I fell in love with the place and I realized that no matter what career I was gonna do, it had to be something that involved traveling and living in different countries. So in 2007, I had been in Sudan for a year and I was preparing to move back to Europe. And I had to think about what jobs I wanted to do in the future and I drew up a list and three jobs that made the short list were international school teacher, security consultant with a focus on Africa, and travel writer. Oddly enough, I've worked in all three of those roles over the past 13 years, but the one I really wanna focus on today in this video is travel writer. If you're desperate to know about my work as a security consultant or my work as an international school teacher, then please let me know. Maybe I'll make a video on those separate topics some other time. So anyway, when I got back to Europe from Sudan in 2007, I was determined I wanted to be a travel writer. The only problem was no one was gonna pay me to do it. I wrote to Lonely Planet, I wrote to Rough Guides, I contacted a bunch of magazines, a bunch of travel websites, but no one was interested in paying me. But I was pretty determined. I like travel, I like writing, so I was just gonna keep doing those two things and eventually someone was gonna pay me to do it. I started off writing free of charge for a website called Polo's Bastards. Now Polo's Bastards is run by two guys called Lee Ridley and Rob Wood. Their tagline is going where we ain't supposed to. So it's essentially a travel website about difficult and dangerous destinations, which really appealed to me. I'd been an avid reader of their website well before they ever published anything I sent them. And the first thing they published was about a road trip I completed in the summer I got back to Europe from Sudan. So in July 2007, my friend Mark and I had a genius idea. We were going to buy a 1973 Series 3 Land Rover as cheaply as possible. In the end, we found it for £750 and we were gonna drive it all the way from the UK down the west coast of Africa to Nigeria. In the end, we never made it to Nigeria. We got as far as Liberia before we had to give up because the road conditions were so bad because the rainy season had kicked in. As you can imagine though, it was still quite an adventure. We went through 12 countries and we passed through the Sahara Desert. This was exactly the kind of adventure that the readers of Polo's Bastards loved. From then on, I kind of had a winning formula. Think of a crazy idea, usually an expedition, go and do the expedition, write about it, get it published on Polo's Bastards. The only minor issue with this plan, of course, was money. I wasn't getting paid to do any of this, and crazy long distance road trips cost quite a lot, and they keep you out of the workplace for quite a while. So that leads me nicely onto the second question, how did I get my first paid travel writing gig? How did I persuade someone to pick up the tab for these ridiculous road trips? Well, our trip down West Africa actually ended up paying for itself quite quickly. As soon as I got back to London, I wrote to a bunch of Land Rover specific magazines for enthusiasts and collectors, and I asked if they wanted a write-up of our journey, maybe with some pictures. Our expedition had been pretty unique because most overlanders tend to go in a brand new well-serviced vehicle, not a 750 pound car that's 34 years old and has no service history. 
So much to our surprise, a bunch of magazines in the UK, USA, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, they all wrote back to me and said, yes, they'd love to have an article. And they paid me between 250 and 550 pounds to write that up and send through some pictures. And that's it. Next thing you know, I'm a professional travel writer. So third question, what kind of stuff do I write now? I'm pretty selective with the writing jobs that I take on now, partly because the glory days of getting paid 500 pounds for a magazine article are well and truly gone and partly because I'm busy with other projects. However, here's an example of the kinds of travel writing projects that I've taken on recently. Putting together itineraries for adventure travel companies. So adventure travel companies thinking of going into a new place like Equatorial Guinea, They're, they've got in touch with me in the past and said, would I write them an itinerary or even do some copy for their website, tell them whether their plans are realistic, that kind of thing. I've written listings and reviews for an app that does city guides in Africa. I've written articles for newspapers in the UK introducing their readers to a new potential holiday destination. I've helped consulting firms write their pitches to ministries of tourism to try and secure funding for international projects to develop tourism in that country. I've also written for the academic and private sector with a focus mainly on African security issues. And of course there's the odd big project with Brat Travel Guides. I'm also keen to branch out and start writing non-fiction adventure travel books. My first foray into this was Kayak the Kwanzaa. So Kayak the Kwanzaa was published in 2019 by crowdfunding publisher Unbound. I don't know if you can see that. There's Unbound. I'll do a separate video at some stage talking about the benefits and drawbacks of publishing with a crowdfunding publisher versus a traditional publisher now that I've got experience of doing both. Fourth and final question. How did I get a job writing for Brat Travel Guides? Before I moved to Sudan in 2006, I remember hunting around all of the bookshops trying to find myself a travel guide, and I saw that Brat were the only publishers that had a travel guide published to Sudan. The guide was written by a guy called Paul Klammer, and I remember a couple of times when I was walking around Sudan, I'd have my head buried in the book looking at a map or something, and a Sudanese person would walk up to me and they'd say, ah, oh, Mr. Klammer, Mr. Klammer, and they'd hold out his business card to show that they'd met him. I remember thinking back then, you know, that level of attention to detail and dedication to the research took him to all these random places in the middle of nowhere in Sudan was really, really impressive. So Brat Guides stuck in my mind. Now, fast forward a few years, it's July 2009 and I was about to move to Angola. Again, a whole other story, can make a separate video talking to you about exactly why I decided to do that, because yeah, that's, uh, we haven't got room for that here. So before moving, I wrote to Brat Guides and I said to them, look, I'm going to Angola. I notice you don't have a travel guide to Angola. Um, would you be interested in me writing it for you? Sadly, they got back to me and they said, no, uh, we do have a guide. It's coming out next month uh, and it's being written by a pair of authors. So we're just in the final stages of editing, uh, but we don't need your help, thank you. So when this first edition came out, I was amazed to see one of the author's names on the front cover was Sean Rorison. Now, Sean Rorison, also wrote for Polo's Bastards, which is the website that I wrote for. I immediately reached out to Sean and I asked him for some advice. I was like, man, how did you get that job with Brat? I really wanna write for Brat Travel Guides. And he gave me some really useful advice. So he told me that while he had written the first edition, this is kind of 2009, there's no way he was still gonna be in Angola in 2012, which was roughly when Brat were gonna want a second edition, because every kind of three or four years, they want an update to the guidebook. So he told me if I was gonna be in the country that I should reach out to them, I should tell them that I'm available for the second edition and that he would act as reference for me. Fast forward three years and Brat did want a second edition. Brat reached out to me, asked if I was still interested in writing the second edition. Of course I was and so I wrote it with the previous author, Mike Stead. There you go. So we got that written over six month period and it came out in 2012. It was this process of writing an update with the previous author and doing it successfully. We submitted our manuscript well before the deadline that convinced Brat that I could be trusted with a full book. So in February 2014, I got the commission for the Brat Travel Guide to Equatorial Guinea. And then in 2018, I got to write the Brat Travel Guide to Angola third edition all on my own. Now the process is pretty simple. I write to Brat, I pitch a destination, and they crunch the numbers and either say yes or no, depending on whether they think it's gonna be profitable to publish a guidebook to that country. So that was my overview of how I got into travel writing. Please remember that I'm gonna be running a Reddit AMA and Ask Me Anything on Sunday the 19th of January. So if you've got any other questions about how I got into the industry, please head along and ask me in the Reddit AMA. 
If you're watching this video after Sunday 19th of January, have a look in the description box below and you'll find a link to the AMA with all the questions and all of my answers. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you.